Let me pull this story from The Independent. Biden slams Republican attempts to ban gender affirming health care in interview with transgender TikTok star. Maybe you guys saw this one. The president's conversation comes as Republicans continue to pass numerous anti-transgender pieces of legislation. Biden met with Dylan Mulvaney. Uh, my personal opinion is that Dylan Mulvaney is intentionally trying to insult and mock trans people and women, and that is is not uh, uh, be behaving seriously. Ultimate but uh, troll. That's what you. That's what I, I think Dylan is? Mulvaney is absolutely trolling. I don't think absolutely. I think that I think mm -mm. that he has um, like arrested development from his like his childhood years, and that that's how he pictures women and yeah he's going nah, to exploit I, I, it. I, I, can, I, I got one point for you wearing high heels in the woods i think that's what do you what mean that's that? like what Dylan, Dylan insane no. that these people are Wait, you, girl, you, reduce, you girls don't do that no when you reduce I mean, no. femininity down to those uh consumerist objects really um yeah if it's what you think uh if it's arrested development and sort of a child's view of, of I think all of it is arrested about womanhood no, 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 and maybe no, no, no. that's, 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 that's how that's, that's, it manifests. I, I think I, I I feel like that's naive. Dylan has that viral video saying these are my hiking heels. That is a phrase that doesn't exist. Barbie pouch. What's the other thing? There, there's there's a bunch of insulting words that Dylan uses to mock women in their in their in their TikTok videos. But that's how a lot of these these transgender people are anyway. Like they're big yeah. character. Is that mutually exclusive women? with Ma being genuinely dysphoric? So if you take a look at, I'll, I'll use two examples that I've used before, and that's ContraPoints and Blair White. They are both prominent political trans people, and they do not behave that way. They you behave like they they and and neither does Contra. They are both. Right. Uh, you can disagree with either of their politics. And they both create well-made YouTube videos discussing their points because just just because someone is trans does not mean they're going to be inherently one way or the other. And and Blair brings up the uh, uh, brought but this I don't point. think Blair has arrested development either. I mean, like she's I'm th that's why I'm arguing when when Dylan Mulvaney makes a video wearing heels in the woods, going <laughs> I'm a girl. Like, that's that's a, come on. You think that's not trolling? Like if someone put on blackface and started running around screaming fried chicken, we'd be like that dude is trying to insult black people. Not that they have arrested development and they think they're black. I think that he's exploiting it and using it to his advantage, but I think he is definitely mentally ill and and like because he was like a gay guy in theater, right? And he was on Broadway or something like that. I I got like a little crazy and I was bored and I watched a lot of his videos like over and over again. Uh, a couple days ago, but like I really think it, they have that look, that like SSRI mentally ill look in their Why face. Why go by Dylan after is, that's transition? A, that, that, that's Dylan's a girl but, name. No, no, look. Dylan can be a See, boy. This, really? is, this, is, this is the game right here. I, I don't, pushing. If, if you, when you look at Dylan Mulvaney, what do I see? I see someone who has created a caricature which creates a weapon for people to attack trans people. Cause I'll mention it again. Blair White and ContraPoints, left and right, extremely prominent and normal behaviors. Granted, you can disagree with the, the idea of being trans or gender dysphoria and say it's in the DSM-5, therefore, you know, it's considered a mental disorder according to DSM-5. But what about him like really going through the process, getting laser hair removal on his face and actually doing the physical steps? Like if it, I would think that he would be more of a troll if he didn't commit to it physically. If that's a troll, that's psychotic. Obviously. He's definitely psychotic. And if it's a mocking caricature, like you say, like blackface, I think the reason that it would be more effective Transface. and powerful Transface. as a way to mock women um, compared to blackface is that like your gender is a lot more uh, crucial to who you are, like who you are as a person than your race. I think your race is just a surface level thing about you, but your gender is way more, uh, core to who you are and how you relate to people. But more egregious than that is that the White House is entertaining it like it's something serious to be talked about. Like there are so many Why, well, other no, things no. going on. But sure, sure. Here, here, here's an easy question though. So like re regardless of who's right on whether, uh, you know, Blair said Dylan is not trolling. And I, uh, okay, but I, I look at this. Why didn't the White House invite ContraPoints? ContraPoints mm -hmm. has, has million, million plus subscribers getting millions of views on these, these hour long essays that are extremely prominent on the left. That, that that are calm well and, and well put together videos again you can disagree with it but contra contra more left or right i don't left, watch left left okay because i i know left blair's is, right so right. like that, that's why i bring up these two specific examples because right. they're very prominent 
uh, you know, a contra has like a million and a half subscribers, mm. gets millions of views. Joe Biden could have been like, here's a person I can bring here to talk about these issues that is calm, rational, and, and politically prominent. Dylan Mulvaney is not politically prominent. And if you're trying to advocate for trans rights, the last person any anyone would bring is gonna be Dylan Mulvaney. Here's the thing though, like their comms team, the, the, everybody knows that when you're working in political comms, you insert yourself into the news cycle. And Dylan has been in the news cycle where Contra has, like I've never heard of it, but I've definitely heard of it might be, Dylan before, yeah. before the White House. It might be Contra's internet footprint if you will mm -hmm. that also like, makes substantially, Dylan Mulvaney Con substantially larger Contra yeah but it's the internet footprint that they don't want because that's something that you have to answer for hmm. and it's like, timing and it's i remember timing. contra's old old videos like those were kind of politically incorrect I like, think it's there's more something timing. to answer for there. You it, try to insert yourself into the news cycle. You hit on something that's big. He just had a, a couple of videos that went viral, mm -hmm. and they're trying to capitalize on it. That's that perhaps, is perhaps. Really shallow is easier. But but hey right. guys, the memes are awesome. The memes are <laughs> incredible when it comes to this entire topic, especially when they had another influencer take over the communications at the White House, and they were just TikTok oh, the right. whole time yeah. around. Uh, the, <laughs> the nails. Uh, yeah, one? yeah. Today, just moments ago, I also tweeted uh, the American people looking all disheveled. Uh, saying, please, I can't afford food or gas. And then uh, Danny DeVito coming off and saying, best I could do is this transgender here that we're going to be talking about. And, and and as you mentioned, Tim, you're absolutely right. This is not an issue that, of course, brings America together. This is an issue that divides America. The administration right now has many problems. Our society has many problems that we're facing right now. And this is this is what we're, we're talking about. This is what they're pushing forward as their agenda. To me, this is a perfect way to distract people, to divide and conquer them, to have no fighting amongst themselves as society literally crumbles all around so, us. So, so let's advance conversation to the next point in the article. Joe Biden coming out and saying states should not be allowed to ban sex changes for children. And to me, I'm, I'm wondering why? What it, What is, what, what do the Democrat, Bill Maher made this point when they were talking about, it was, uh, I think it was in 2020 or it was in 2018, Democrats were advocating for transgender rights in prisons. And Bill Maher said, I get it. We want to protect civil rights, but this is like 300 people. Why are they putting it front and center? Now, you can argue, of course. Hey, man, marginalized, the most marginalized voices probably need the most help because no one pays attention to them for exactly what Bill Maher is saying. No one's paying attention to this small group of people. Therefore, someone needs to. But when Joe Biden comes out choosing an extremely, extremely divisive issue and one that is extremely unpopular, I have to wonder why? Who, whose vote is he trying to secure by coming out and saying children should get sex changes? I don't know whose vote he's trying to secure, but I will say that, you know, this all, it all goes back to the, um, the civil right, the civil rights era legislation. And so no matter what these like small minorities do, as long as they couch it in civil rights language, they'll, they're never going to get beat no matter what the vote says, because it's like enshrined in quote the constitution. So they can say whatever they want. Like it, it the voting population won't matter. It may like slow it or, or, or you know, if if we object to it temporarily, but it's enshrined in law that like, if you couch anything in, you know, civil rights terminology, that it's going to stay like that. So, I mean, I guess he's just trying to be on quote the eventual right side of history because that's what's going to happen given what we did in the in what sixty four. I think one thing the Democrats do, and all politicians, is try is compartmentalize information, and they don't know how to do it right now, and that's the problem. The example being Hillary Clinton when she was, this is 2015, I think. She went to, where was it, Arkansas or Alabama? With the hot sauce? No, she put on a Southern Drawl. Oh, yeah. She talked a little like this. And it's like, Hillary, <laughs> you were in New York for the longest time on TV. We know you don't talk like that. But back in the old days, you could get away with that. Imagine what it, what it must have been like campaigning before radio. You'd show up to Boston and you'd put on a Boston accent. People would be like, hey, he sounds just like me. And then you go to New York and you say both instead of both and all of a sudden people think you sound like them. And then you go down the South and you talk like this and everyone's like, but no one could know how you really talk because you can't write down, you know, if someone was had an accent or something. Right, that's true. Then we get radio, then we get TV, then we get the internet. Even with TV, local news is not going to play the video of Hillary Clinton in, you know, New York's not gonna play the Alabama footage. They're gonna play the New York footage. Now we have the internet, 
All of a sudden, there's a viral video of Hillary Clinton putting on a fake accent. All of a sudden, there's a, even a, AOC. AOC is just doing did it. it. I was just gonna say, yeah, she so just weird. She doesn't more than people said that Latina. she was imitating that meme where that little kid is like, "Listen, Linda, listen." I think that they were. That she was doing that, or was she just trying to like fake the accent? It's not that one. There was another event she went to a couple. It was like a year or two ago where she had a really heavy Latina accent, even though everyone's like, we, so we, phony. you went to, where, where did you go to school? Like Boston University or something? Like you don't talk like that. That's crazy. You're My like, favorite thing about that whole clip was like, she's like, oh, classy, classy. Like that's what they say. And she's sitting there like spread eagle, like in the middle on the, to the stage. Like, and she's like, be classy. And her legs are like, spread open out on the floor for everybody. I'm like, oh, you're so gross. I, She's so gross. <laughs> I think when they, when Joe Biden has someone like Dylan Mulvaney at the the White House, what they're probably looking at is, this is a person who has all of these Gen Z followers. So whatever we say here doesn't apply outside this bubble, right? Like they still live in this world where they think meeting with this influential person won't ripple outwards. Go back 50 years, meet with a civil rights leader, and do an interview talking about how you're going to defend their, defend their work. You're hoping that civil rights leader will go out to all of their all of their followers and say, "Here's what they told me." But is someone who's not a fan of that person going to listen to what they have to say? No. What Biden is hoping for is a hundred people hear what I've just said today and vote for me, and maybe only ten people hear it outside of this bubble and get mad at me for it. See, compartmentalizing think, the information thinking you can say whatever you want because it won't reach the outer the, the, the larger public so i think there's a like different factions that are interested in this trans agenda thing right you have big pharma that's going to make tons of money on it what not just with the drugs themselves but with like even if you're confusing children years and years of therapy like that all costs money right so big pharma has an interest in propping up this stuff right the left does because they think it's like the sympathy where the good guys vote and then you also have like the creeps that took advantage of like the regular LGBT stuff and say, hey, if we couch it in these same terms, then, you know, we can have pedophilia, whatever. So you have all these interests that while are not the same, because you know how everybody on the right, like the left says, oh, you're talking about they, like who's the they, where's the big conspiracy theories? It's not like that they're all in like, there's one guy like pulling the strings. And of course there might be a couple that are really influential, but they all have competing interests. Like big pharma definitely has an interest in, in pushing this. Um, along with you know well yeah. every company that makes money yeah you know? well they they get patients that are hooked for the rest of their lives you get them in early especially the young children you're going to have someone that's going to be buying your product every single month because they need to in order to live and then remember, remember the, uses this and they dump money into his campaign remember the report that said it was something like pharmaceutical or wall street said that cures are probably bad business Yep, it was a Goldman Sachs assessment saying maybe we shouldn't cure people because that will hurt our profit motive. This is the kind of <laughs> satanic, megaloman, me, how do you say that word? Megalomaniacal thinking of, of, of these lunatics who are essentially truly calling the shots, have the big big corporate lobbyist. And uh, when, when you look at Dylan Mulvaney, like how do you explain him uh, again, testing tampons, but then the next day trying to normalize women having that bulges. This is just, That's why I'm saying yeah. this it's, a just a need, it's a troll. It's a troll. This is a desperate need for clout. That's what it is. I just looked at Dylan Mulvaney's Instagram story and saw a picture captioned, peeing at the White House. I'm telling you, this person... <laughs> like That's is, just somebody who is desperate for clout. I wouldn't be surprised if, if in a year, Dylan Mulvaney comes out and says, you are all so dumb. Because all this is, is mocking women and mocking trans people. Now, we have to ask ourselves, why is this happening? I mean, according according to a Tafalgar poll, 80% poll, 80% uh, of Americans don't support gender treatment for children. So why are they doing this? Is it someone at the White House saying, hey, Dylan Mulvaney is getting all these views. Maybe if we get him to the White House, we'll, we'll get him to support our cause and, get, and tell everyone to vote for us. But people don't understand. Maybe people are just watching because it's a car all right, crash. All right, I got a conspiracy theory for you. China wants Trump to win. Saudi Arabia wants Trump to win. TikTok is controlled by the CCP, and they're advancing ideologies that are sabotaging the Democrats because when Trump is president, now a lot of people might think right top of their head, no, 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 Trump was hard on China. That was bad for China. Was it? Donald Trump goes America first, brings manufacturing back to the United States. In the short term, bad for China. In the long term, Donald Trump doesn't want to go to war, doesn't care about the Belt and Road Initiative, doesn't care about Africa and South America. Donald Trump cares about America, America first. In the long run, that's actually really good for China. You could make the argument. 
So TikTok comes out promoting these ideologies that Democrats embrace and then Democrats lose. Donald Trump gets in. Donald Trump says, I don't understand why we're in NATO. I don't understand why we're in Syria. I don't understand why we're in Afghanistan. China moves in Afghanistan. China moves into other parts of the Middle East. Russia expands their gas monopoly. All things that may be bad, hypothetically, for other parts of the world or who knows. But most most of the people who support Trump are like, why do we care about these other these, these things? Why do we care about you know what other countries are doing? Why 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 do we care about intervening in foreign wars in Ukraine? So China may be looking at the bigger picture, like, hey, if Trump is president, America gets out of our way. Well, you know, Biden's giving you know China Afghanistan on a silver platter, especially yeah. when the corporations have come in. When you look at the conflict in Ukraine, you do see China benef- benefiting from it because it's the United States versus Russia, NATO versus Russia, and they're kind of in the middle, watching two enemies kind of fight each other and destroy themselves. This is a, an opportunity for China to potentially even take Taiwan. So I would just counter that with those two points when it comes to theorizing about this theory. Thanks for checking out this segment from the TimCast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.